This is KGW News at 5. Hello, friends, and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock on this Monday. Oregon health leaders still haven't put out any clear guidance on how the state's retail businesses will follow new CDC guidelines on masks and social distancing. That is leading to a lot of confusion and a variety of different practices out there. KGW's Pat Doris looked into what's going on today, and he joins us live. Pat. Well, Dan, after Governor Brown last Thursday said that, yes, Oregon would follow the CDC's new relaxed guidance when it came to COVID masks both inside and out, actually nothing changed when it came to indoor retail for the masks. But a lot of people thought that it had changed. And now it appears that some of the biggest companies in America are violating Oregon rules because they thought this state, like many others around the country, had dropped that mask mandate. In the greater Portland area, it's still common to see people wearing masks outside, although it seems like more and more of us are getting comfortable with the CDC guidelines that allow us to drop them, especially if we're fully vaccinated. Those same national guidelines say vaccinated people do not need a mask in most inside settings. But the state of Oregon said not so fast. It is still requiring masks indoor while the Oregon Health Authority works out new rules to go with that CDC guidance. We know that people are waiting for this um, and we know we're going to get it out as quickly as we can. That's Dr. Uh, Dean Seidlinger, the state epidemiologist for Oregon. Late last week, he said the state will likely require employees to check someone's vaccination status at the door if the business is going maskless inside. It's not what people like Dan Afrasiabi want to hear. Standard retail teams are just not trained to be able to review things like vaccination cards or photos of vaccination cards. So it just needs to be well thought out. He owns several Planet Fitness gyms around the state. He said his company will follow whatever requirements the OHA sets out, but he thinks it should not be tougher than what the president rolled out last week. We think some kind of an honor system consistent with what Pre President Biden and the CDC have said, uh, as they've outlined, are sufficient to achieve the right balance for businesses and, and for uh, Oregon citizens. In the meantime, it seems mask mandates are all over the board. In Vancouver, the Target store was not requiring masks for those vaccinated today, which is in line with Washington state rules. But the Walmart is requiring masks, which seems to go against the company's national stance. And a Starbucks in Vancouver told me masks were required at their store, although the corporate headquarters told me masks are only required where state or local law say they must be. In the Portland area, where masks are still required at all indoor retail sites, the Hillsborough Costco told me I did not need a mask if I'm fully vaccinated. A Portland Target said they are not enforcing masks either. And a Walmart told me if I'm vaccinated, I do not need a mask. A Starbucks in northwest Portland said masks are still indeed required inside. Back live now so you can see it's a real mess. The governor's office late today responded to my email from this morning saying that it's a very complex issue and it's going to take a lot more time to work all this out. Frankly, I think one of the tougher things for them to work out is going to be that whole vaccine passport and whether employees really have to ask for it. I doubt hardly anybody is interested in doing that. Back to you. Well, thank you for making it a little more clear for us amid the mess. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Let's talk about small businesses. They've been rolling with the mask mandates for more than a year now, and now they're dealing with it differently in Oregon and Washington. We checked in at Hood River today where not much has changed yet in light of a CDC guidance. That's because, as Pat just laid out, Oregon has not put out its rules connected to the CDC plan. Across the river in White Salmon, Washington, the mask required signs are coming down in some businesses, like at this wine bar. That's because Washington quickly adopted the CDC guidelines and is leaving it up to them to decide. Back in Hood River at Grand Coffee Brewers, they may keep the mask going for a while longer, no matter what Oregon decides. I think as long as we're keeping our employees safe uh, and people are wearing masks while they're ordering, I think that's kind of the most important thing, at least to our business. Um, we would like everyone to be wearing masks inside if they're not eating or drinking. Businesses we talked with said while most people are complying with their rules, some are questioning their need to wear a mask given the new CDC guidelines. Take a look at this. A brutal attack at Glen Auto Park yesterday caught on camera. Deputies hoping that somebody at home 
will recognize the attackers. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office says a group of men swam across the Sandy River and then started punching and kicking two brothers. Officials say the attackers used homophobic slurs, so the assault is being investigated as a possible hate crime. The suspects were gone by the time deputies got to the park last night. We have a longer version of the video linked in this story on KGW.com. If you recognize anyone in this video, you're asked to contact the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. A new poll from the Oregonian, Oregon Live, lays out exactly what people do think right now of downtown Portland. It is, a, it is commissioned with the help of Portland-based DHM Research, who surveyed 600 people across the metro area. And honestly, the results may not surprise you very much. When asked about safety, 42% of people, they were polled and said downtown was much less safe than it was a year ago. Another 21% said it was somewhat less safe. When asked about why people don't come downtown anymore, more than 60% listed a combination of recent protests, the growing number of homeless camps, and general concerns about safety. Did these findings surprise you? A lot of what's in this poll is the same things that people have been saying for the last six months or, or longer. So not necessarily a surprise, um, but I, we went into the poll just wanting to hear what people had to say. and. Uh, see where it went. Yeah, not a surprise, but important nonetheless, especially when you look at the question about how our government officials handled these crises and what those officials have to say about it. We're going to dig a bit more into this poll tonight at six o'clock on the story. Eight months ago, historic wildfires wiped out a small mountain town nestled in the Cascades, a town with tourism as its backbone. The wildfires could impact tourism season in Detroit, which starts next week. But as people there clean up and begin rebuilding, hope trumps the hurt. Here's Morgan Romero. Here, you can see where two massive fires met and destroyed Detroit. About 80 percent is on the ground. Oregonians Lakeside Escape, holding so many memories. Everybody had this place in their hearts. Flames wiped out livelihoods and over 300 homes. We'd come up here and just forget about everything and, and spend time with family. And, and I've noticed how that's changed since we lost it, that we haven't had that time together as much. The mayor says Detroit's population runs around 1,500. Only about 200 are full-time. The majority are second homeowners, like the rules. Those homeowners and short-term renters support much of its economy. With most houses and hotel rooms gone, the town faces a summer of struggle. It's been terribly hard on the whole community. Uh, there's no financial base left up here, so we're basically starting from day one all over. I'm standing in the middle of what used to be Detroit's small but mighty business district. A lot of the businesses were targeted to tourists. It's a very popular tourist destination. Almost all of the buildings here burned down. Some won't rebuild, some will, but it won't be in time for the summer. We're starting with one market and one restaurant and four rooms. Mountain High Grocery is one of the two businesses still standing. I'm ready to give some hope back to this town. Mountain High will do that. Put them on. Closed since September, they're rushing to reopen Memorial Day weekend. When peak season sets in, Travel Salem estimates almost a million people visit Detroit every year, spending a total of around $50 million. The bulk of that comes in the summer. And most of our tourism is based around the lake. I think the tourism will be here. What concerns me is the level of service that we'll be able to provide those people. On the main drag, the mayor says food trucks will take the place of restaurants. We're going to do more food trucks on that corner over there. So three corners will be food trucks, food carts. On the lake. There's a lot in there that we can't replace. Marina's lost buildings, but the docks survived. People can rent through Detroit Marina when they get power. They didn't lose any of their 37 rentals. But lake levels are lower this year, which will cut the season short. A building burning down, we can deal with that as long as we have water, but having to deal with both, it definitely makes it a little more tough. Despite setbacks, you'll see more smiles than sorrow. 
In fact, people up here grow more optimistic by the day. The reason we gauge it is off our moorage and how many people want to keep their boats with us for the summer, and we're doing really well as far as numbers go. It's not just dock slips. RV parks and campgrounds are filling up. I checked online, and Detroit Lake Campground is booked for the holiday weekend. A lot of homeowners cleaned up their properties. Some sold, others started rebuilding, or at least planned to. And the town just got temporary water. I mean, it feels like it's slowly coming back. These, these, they're hurdles to get over, but I mean, the people up here are just so resilient and, and tough. From up here, you can choose to see ruin. You can also choose to see rebirth. I mean, the beauty's still here. You just don't look at the burn. <laughs> look at what, look what's still alive. We have a clean slate, you know, that's one of the, if there is a silver lining, that's one of them here is that there were some things we wanted to do to make a good place even better. Detroit's strong. We are strong and we will continue to be. Morgan Romero, KGW News. Mayor Trett worries about Detroit's budget, worries how the city government will survive through all of this. With a lot of houses gone, property tax revenue is taking a huge hit this year. And that's not all. It will also lose out on transit occupancy tax dollars. Trett says it could be up to 10 years before Detroit really rebounds. But we are rooting for you, Detroit.